All right, so I am finishing up. with some of my refined paint, using option to steal the color. Working at only about a 50% opacity so that those other colors and those other layers show through so that now when I turn off my base paint, I can see most of it's covered. There's some areas where it's not. I can reassert some marks. The rest of his shoulder in here. helpful tool is called the navigator tool under windows remember it's this little steering wheel so i can zoom in and i can see the the paint surface right and i want this paint surface to kind of look a little bit like my inspiration and to get that really kind of jagged finish if i had several more hours to work on this, I would go with a smaller brush at a higher opacity. And I would just keep building it up, right? These kind of complementary colors over and over until I've done like 19 videos. But the important thing when you're working on a project is determining your level of finish and then trying to to get that everywhere in the image and that can be a real challenge All right, now I'm going to try to learn some lessons from some of my favorite painters to kind of frame this and finish it off. So Wayne Thiebaud, I got this one. You can see the orange and the green and the blue. And then he has it with ice cream here, the orange and the teal, purple, cyan. So I'm going to use some of these really bright colors. Steal them from here. I'm going to use them to kind of outline certain things. This is not digital coloring. This is playing with the color theory, trying to augment. And I can do it on a new layer. I've heard this called highlighting. But I'm going to do the opposite. So where the light is hitting, I'm going to try to outline with a cool color, like a blue especially along the edges. Helps me define the, the line and the edge too. And then where the shadows are, I'm gonna use a warm color, like a, an orange or a yellow. So like on the nose on this side, it's gonna kind of vibrate with these hot pinks or these oranges. in the eye. Maybe the strong green in the shadow or on the, the highlight. Thank you. 
And don't be afraid to be bold. So in this way, I can kind of emphasize certain shapes that I think are working. And it'll help me recognize the ones that aren't. Right, this scares me because even though it's Trent Reznor who doesn't usually enforce copyright, it's a Disney owned property. So that scares me. I need to change. Don't forget the power of scribbling. Always helpful. That reckless abandon of a three-year-old finger painting. Now, I haven't showed the smudge tool, kind of how that works. What's nice about it is you can do kind of really straightforward full pigment but then you can use the smudge tool and push it around and it will soften your edges as you push kind of get the shape you want because it's really easy to get hard edges it's harder to get those those targeted soft edges but you can always get soft from hard because the computer is good at taking away focus. All right. So now I'm hoping to finish it up. It's going to give a little bit more dimension to this tie. And it still looks very clownish. But I'm going to start playing with some compositing, like layering techniques to play with it on top. Because this is raster imaging, and really anything goes as long as you're controlling the pixels. A little stronger shape to this underside of the mustache.
And then I need purple in the mouth here. Okay, almost done. Now on this exclusion layer, which gives me the opposite colors, I'm going to use smudge a little bit. And now, I'm going to save it once that's processed. Come on. Okay. Now, I can see when I squint that the lighting's kind of even on everything. Smudge takes a while to process. It's still working on it. <laughs> and what I want to do is squint at my reference and see that there's more shadow in this eye. So finishing techniques, lock the layers underneath, right? You can see how much refined paint there is. It's about the right amount. I could use a little bit more here. But now on a new layer... I'm just going to take some bold, bold action with big strokes just to set my lighting shapes. So I'm going to steal a dark color and I'm going to match the lighting shapes. So that when I squint, it kind of matches the lighting directions I'm trying to, to get in my image. All right. Uh, not quite that much. Let's take that opacity down a bit. And then the forehead here, and then the hair here. Okay, now I did that all on a layer on top. You know, big difference. But now I can play, of course, with opacity, but also with a blending mode. And soft light, pin light, I think soft light's going to be good. You see how it will deepen my contrast in just those areas. So it's a way of kind of dodging and burning in a non-destructive way on a new layer. Kind of finding your way. And sometimes you do a lot of work and you just don't really like the result, but you've learned from it, right? Nothing wrong with that. But then we can always just do go for some big swings. So for instance, I can take this reference image all its wild strokes, unlock it, make it big, stretch it across the whole thing, and then set this at a different blending mode. 